Would you like to learn about a tax loophole that can increase your after-tax return? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you some low-hanging fruit that can do just this. Now, the nice part about this loophole is it doesn't matter specifically what you invest in. You can invest in value stocks, growth stocks, energy stocks, or tech stocks. It really doesn't matter. What matters is the vehicle around these investments. Let me show you what I mean. Now, this loophole is specifically going to apply to investors with a taxable account. Now, there are two types of funds that you can invest in with a taxable account, a mutual fund or an ETF, an exchange traded fund. Now, the reason this loophole exists is because of the structural differences between a mutual fund and an ETF. So when you hold a mutual fund, I want you to think about this simplistically as it being a pass-through entity. When you hire a mutual fund manager, you give money to that mutual fund. That mutual fund manager is also your tax manager because anytime there is a change made within that mutual fund, that tax liability is passed on to you. Now this becomes a huge problem because that mutual fund manager knows absolutely nothing about your tax situation and they're not thinking about your tax situation. And so this is the case even with an index fund. Let's say that we have an S&P 500 index fund. Well, in 2020, Tesla was added to the S&P 500 and a real estate company was taken away from the S&P 500. Well, that was a selling of that real estate company and a buying of Tesla, and that created a taxable event that was passed through to anybody with an index mutual fund. Now, this creates a very leaky bucket because it means that there are capital gain distributions passed through to investors on an ongoing basis that you really have no control of if you're a mutual fund investor. Now, an ETF is structured completely differently. Without getting too far into the weeds, essentially what happens is there is a middle ground that is basically a tax wrapper between you and these tax liabilities. And what happens here is this ETF company trades specific investments with something called a market maker. And because it's all within this tax wrapper, any changes doesn't transfer a taxable event to the given investor. And so what this does is it takes a leaky bucket and essentially shores up all the given holes. So you gain complete control over your taxable income. Now, if this doesn't make complete sense right now, wait until we get into a few examples. And what's interesting is when we look at the average mutual fund capital gain distribution versus the U.S. stock performance going back into history, we see that capital gain distributions are quite consistent. We saw anywhere from 2% capital gain distributions in 2009 all the way up to 11% capital gain distributions in 2018. And we'll notice that these aren't exactly correlated with stock market performance, or at least there's a lag. For instance, in 2018, we saw 11% capital gain distributions despite the market being down around 5%. In 2008, we saw 8% capital gain distributions despite the market being down 35 plus percent. So each and every year, whether you want it or not, mutual funds distribute capital gains to investors oftentimes throwing a tax torpedo into their situation. Let's say that you had a surprise capital gain distribution at the end of the year, and that pushed you above a Medicare increase zone. Well, now you might have a thousand plus dollar expense from a Medicare premium increase due to that surprise capital gain distribution. Now, if you're not yet convinced why this is such a big deal, let's walk through a few examples comparing mutual funds to ETFs. And we're gonna be trying to compare apples to apples comparisons and trying to essentially duplicate performance. The only thing changing here is the after-tax return. Let's first look at a BlackRock fund comparison. So we're gonna be looking at on the mutual fund side, this iShares Russell Small and Mid Cap Index Fund. On the ETF side, we're gonna be looking at this iShares Core S&P Mid Cap ETF. Now, although these are named quite differently, know that they hold a lot of the same investments and therefore will be very highly correlated together following very similar performance. But the tax costs of these two investments are vastly different. As you can see on the screen, when we look at the 2021 distribution from this mutual fund, we see that there was 81 cents. Now this 81 cents doesn't mean a lot. We have to look at this relative to the fund price at those given times. If we look at an estimated average share price of $17, we see that this fund distributed 4.76% of forced income to investors. Now note this distribution had a higher tax cost because a portion was long-term capital gains, a portion was short-term capital gains, and then a portion was dividend income. When we compare this to the ETF, we see that the ETF only distributed $3.34 in 2021 on an average NAV of $265 for only 1.2% of forced income. And so we see despite the performance being very similar, the tax cost was wildly different. Now know that when we compare index mutual funds to index ETFs, at times they will be quite similar in terms of their ongoing distribution. 
This is because if the underlying index doesn't change investments in a big way, we expect the only big distribution to be dividend income. But there will be at times where an index does change those given investments in a big way. And having that advantaged ETF tax wrapper around any changes is very important. Next, let's look at a Vanguard fund comparison. Now in this comparison, we aren't exactly looking at purely index funds. The reason being is because this Vanguard US Growth Investor Fund isn't technically classified as an index fund, depending on who you ask. This is what I would classify as a closet index fund. The reason being is when we compare this to the Vanguard Growth ETF, we'll notice their performance is quite similar. They hold a lot of the same investments, but once again, we see that the tax cost to these two funds is vastly different. In 2021, this Vanguard US Growth Investor Mutual Fund forced 13.4% of forced income to investors. This Vanguard ETF instead only distributed 0.55% to investors as forced income. Now, thus far, we've been comparing passive funds or index funds, where the real benefit of this tax loophole comes in is if you're more of an active investor. And so when we compare an active mutual fund to an active ETF, now we start to see a much larger difference. And the reason being is because with an active fund, that fund manager is buying and selling more often, thus delivering additional capital gain distributions to investors. So there's obviously a difference in how much is distributed from these two investment vehicles over time. But what does that mean to me as an investor? Well, it means quite a bit actually. So what are you losing in mutual funds by having those capital gain distributions? Well, on the screen, I have a chart here that shows a $100,000 portfolio growing at 10% for 20 years, and I'm showing various capital gain distribution rates. We're using a long-term capital gain rate of 15%, and we're seeing distributions here of no distributions, 2.5% distributions, 5%, 7.5%, 10%, and 15%. And so we see on the screen that going from no distributions on an annual basis to 5% capital gain distributions costs this investor almost a third of a percent on an annual after-tax performance. Now, as we saw, ETFs don't completely eliminate any given distributions, but they are much more efficient from a tax standpoint, much closer to the no distributions example. Now, some investors might shrug at this after-tax return difference. Albeit it is small, but understand that with compounding, small differences can make a big deal. As you'll see on the screen, over a 20-year period, a small after-tax return difference can cost you tens of thousands of dollars. But the bigger point here is what are mutual funds offering you as an advantage to ETFs? This is some pretty low hanging fruit that you can capture as an investor. And because of this, we've seen a quick adoption of ETFs over time. In fact, as we move forward into this decade, it's estimated that ETF asset size will pass mutual fund asset size very quickly. And so we can see that some small changes can make a big difference inside of your taxable account. For a lot of investors, this ends up being a very leaky bucket that surprises them each tax year. This doesn't have to be the case, but mutual funds versus ETFs isn't the only difference you can make within this taxable account. We have four other taxable account rules that you need to follow in order to get the most out of this account. Click on this video right here to learn more. Always remember you don't need more money, you need a better plan. Thanks for watching.